as we start chapter 3, again, the textbook is very useful in giving us these little tidbits of things. As Humphrey approaches the troll, it speaks. If truly truthful troll I be, then go thou east, and be thou free. Logic, which is the topic of this chapter, is useful to authors in the creation of such puzzles, and also to readers in solving them. So we're going to look at this in some detail, pick up on vocabulary, and look over uh, these objectives, part of which will be our vocabulary. So we're going to distinguish between statements and non-statements, compose negation of statements, that is, their opposite, if true, false, translate between words and symbols, uh, a couple of symbols in this chapter, interpret statements with qualifiers, and form their negation. Well, if this is true, this is negation. Or if it was false, the negation makes it true. So again, a little play on things we'll be looking into in some detail. And then truth values and making truth uh, charts uh, involving qualifiers and number sets. Now, first, we want to start off by defining a statement. In this section, we're going to be using what is called symbolic logic, which uses letters to represent statements, and symbols to represent these key words, and, or, not. Logic is used to determine the truth value, that is, the truth or falsity of a statement with multiple parts. Truth value of such statements depend on their components, that is, their parts. So many kind of sentences occur in ordinary language, including factual statements, opinions, commands, and questions. Symbolic logic discusses only statements that involve facts. And by definition, then, a statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both simultaneously at the same time. So, we're going to look at some statements here. The first one being Electronic mail provides a means of communication. And I think we all agree to that is true. Now here's a mathematical statement. 12 plus 6 equals 13. Well, that is not true. Going on, uh, the statement, access the file could be a command. Did the Seahawks win the Super Bowl? That's a question. This player is a better baseball player than this player. That's an opinion. And this statement is false. That might be an opinion too. And again, the first is a command, the second a question, the third an opinion. Now, the statement is false is a paradox. 
That is, if we assume it is true, that it is false. If we assume it is false, that it is true. So again, you get play on words and it gets to be a little bit tricky. Now, a compound statement may be formed by combining two or more statements. The statements making up a compound statement are called component statements. Various logical connectives or simple connectives and they're describing them as the word and, or, not, and then the combination, if something, then something, can be used in forming compound statements. Although the statements as today is not Tuesday, does not consist of two component statements. For convenience, it is considered compound because its truth value is determined by noting the truth value of a different statement. Today is Tuesday. And examples are a way to go. So let's take a look at example one. Deciding whether a statement is compound. Now again, it has to be two statements connected by one of these special words or short phrases. Lord Byron wrote sonnets. So that's one statement. And there's a connective. The poem exhibits an abric pentameter, whatever that is. That's the second statement. So this is compound. You can pay me now. That's a statement. Or a connective. You can pay me later. That's a second statement. So this is compound. If it's on the internet, then, and there is the if then, it must be true. So this is compound. My pistol was made by Smith and Weston, or Wesson. So this N here is not used as a connective of two statements. So this is not compound. And of course the answers are there that you can look over. All right, uh, negation. And a formal word to indicate not true or the opposite. Anthony Marcella has a red truck is a statement. The negation of this statement is Anthony Marcella does not have a red truck. This would be in the positive. This is in the negative. The negation of a true statement is false. And the negation of a false statement is true. All right, let's look at some examples here. Forming negations. We'll start with some easy ones here. The city has a mayor. That city does not have a mayor would be the neg negation. The moon is not a planet. The moon is a planet. And let's 
go on and study this chart they're going to give us. So one way to detect incorrect negations is to check truth values. A negation must have the opposite truth value from the original statement. And we're going to use a little bit of mathematics here to help us with some meanings and some of these symbolisms you may already know. We say A and when the inequality sign the point of it toward the lesser. So we say A is less than B, such that nine, uh, four is less than nine, and one half is less than three fourths. So this, nice, checks out well. A is greater. The wide end of the inequality sign is toward the greater. So A is greater than B. 6 is greater than 2, negative 5 is greater than negative 11. And again, if we put that on a number line, negative 11 is out there, and negative 5 is to the right of it. Anything to the right of something on a number line is greater than anything to its left. Now here we modify it a little bit by adding an equal sign or part of an equal sign. We say A is less than or equal to B. And here we're saying A is greater than or equal to B. Now as we look at this, uh, again, we're borrowing this from mathematics, which is what this course is about in a sense. 8 is less than or equal to 10. Now, we know it doesn't equal 10, but part of this is true, so therefore it's a true statement. And here we see that 3 equals 3. It's not less than, but part of it is true. So the statement is true. And the same applies here. All right, now what we want to do is negate inequalities. Now, in letter A, the original statement is x is less than 9. Well, to negate this, again, it's opposite. We would say x is greater than would than 9 or you could also say x is greater than or equal to 9 would be a proper negation of this. Now in letter B the same principle applies. We would take the inequality symbol and just reverse it. Instead of saying greater or equal to we could just say is less than. Now, they're saying, do not use the slash symbol. They don't want you to write like so, where we slash that and say, is not equal. That's not what we're looking for. Okay. Now, remember, we're studying what is called symbolic logic. So we need symbols. And we'll have words. And I did mention one of the words that in math and has a special meaning. And the symbol we're going to use for n is what is called the caret, which we use when we want to find powers of things on our calculators. And and the type of statement is a conjunction. Now what I did is I paused the tape and copied this down. So you want to have this in your notes. The special word OR, the symbol is an inverted caret, or it looks like a V. 
and that is a disjunction. Or is a disjunction. And is a conjunction. Now these all have mathematical backgrounds that we will actually in future chapters go into in more detail. And then the connective, not. Remember, that is the negation. And for that, we use that little wavy line. I like to make this symbol. This is the negation. So the symbol negation represents the connective not. If P represents the statement Barack Obama was president in 2014, then the negation of P represents Barack Obama was not president in 2014. All right, let's get some practice. Now, as we get on to example four, we're going to be translating from symbols into words. So look at your little chart, and as a little help, what symbol did we say the inverted carrot was? Well, we said that was an or. And the carrot, we said, was an and. And this wavy line was negation. This is negation of this combine. And this was an and. I'm sorry, an or. This is the end. Okay, look at your work. And these are going to be like little helpers for you. Now, from the table, as we say, V symbolizes the OR, and thus P and Q represents nursing informatics is a growing field. Now we put in the OR, OR critical care will always be in demand. All right, looking at B. Nursing informatics is not a growing field, and critical care will always be in demand. You are negating that first statement by including a not there. Now in letter C, notice this is in a parenthesis, but it's an or, and you would start off by negating the whole thing. It is not the case that nursing informatics is a growing field, and then putting in the or, or critical care will always be in demand. This sometimes is translated into what is called a neither P nor Q. And letter D, you're negating, but you're putting an and there. It is not the case, that's your negation, that nursing informatics is a growing field, and now critical care will always be in demand. Once again, for something like this, you may have to pause, look at it, and some study. Okay, we're now going into what are called qualifiers, or as I should say, quantifiers. So the two words sometimes get a little confusing. Quantity, that is the amount of something, and quality, which is the nature of the goodness of the material. This is amount. This is a uh, description of its goodness. But here we are talking about quantity. 
So amount of something. And words that are quantifiers are all, each, every, no or none. These are universal quantifiers. While words are phrases such as some, there exist for at least one are what we call existential quantifiers. These are not everything. Part of it is. Be careful when forming the negation of a statement involving quantifiers. Perhaps you've heard the expression painting something with a broad brush that is applying all when it should be some. So we'll be taking a look at that. All girls in the group are named Mary. So many people would write the negation of this statement as no girls in the group are named Mary, or all girls in the group are not named Mary. But neither of these is correct. To see why, look at the three groups below. So we'll need to flip pages here, but as you can see in group one, all are named Mary. In group two, some are named Mary. In group three, none are named Mary. So we have to flip pages here a little. So as we study this chart, keep in mind that some may mean at least one and possibly all. That's what some means. Could mean all. But it, we'll see. Let's take a look at our truth value as it applies in this table here. Well, all girls in the group are named Mary. That's a given. For group one, it's true, but false for groups two and three. No girls in the group are named Mary. That's a possible negation. Well, that'd be false in group one, false in group two, but true in group three. All girls in the group are not named Mary. Again, a possible negation. False for group one, false for group two, but true for group three. Some girls in the group are not named Mary. This is a possible negation. Well, that's true, I'm sorry, false for the first group. I'm looking ahead. True for the second, true for the third. So when we put this in this truth chart, we see this one is true, but these are false. So the proper negation of it is that our first group would need to be false, and our second group and third group would need to be true here. So this is the proper negation. Now other ways of saying it, that would be acceptable, any of these. And we'll let you read that from your text. And these are some others here. So the negation of quantified statements. All do, some do not. Some do, none do. 
So again, careful study and take notes. This is an excellent example here. The negation of the negation of a statement is simply the statement itself. All right, let's look at some more examples. Now, for example five, as we look at it, some cats have fleas, some mean at least one, so the negation is no cats has fleas. Some cats do not have fleas. For the negation of B, it would be all cats have fleas. In letter C, no cats have fleas. The negation of this, and it gives you this warning, you might tend to say all cats have fleas. The proper negation would be some cats have fleas. So you can put a little star by that. Don't make that wrong selection. Now we've already gone over the sets of numbers, so you should have this in your notes, and we'll need that to reflect on these examples to decide whether these quantifier statements are true or false. Now as you read these, you want to see if you can find an example that may make it false in a way. So you're looking at things. There exists a whole number that is not a natural number. Well, the answer to this one is there is such a number, so this statement is true. The number is zero. Every integer is a natural number. Well, integers are whole numbers, and natural numbers, therefore integers, so this one is true. Every natural number, wait a minute. Okay, let's take a look. I didn't record as I listed them, so there exists a whole number that is not a natural number, and that is zero. So therefore, this is true. Every integer is a natural number. In this way, it's false. But if they had said natural numbers are integers, that would have been true. But this way, it's false. Because uh, an integer is a negative one, as they mentioned below, and that's not a natural number. Every natural number is a rational number. That is true. They're all divided by one, and that meets the definition. There exists an irrational number that is not real. Well, all irrational numbers are real numbers. Therefore, this is false. And more detail here. And we should have time in class, so we're going to pause and we're going to look and decide whether each is a statement or is not a statement. And why?